Hey guys, I'm coming to you with a little update. I've been down and out for a few days here. Um, this is my personal uh, COVID story and experience. I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving medical advice in any way. I'm just telling you uh, what uh, has been prescribed to us and uh, me and uh, the process of this whole thing for me personally. Um, all right, so last Thursday, 3 a.m., um, it started with uncontrollable vomiting and diarrhea, like it is with everybody. Um, that till about noon the next day, I thought, okay, that was it. And then the extreme body aches, fatigue came in. Um, the the absolute pressure that, that that makes you feel like your head is just going to explode. Um, and that went on for three four days with um, extreme fevers of of one hundred three for me. Um, I was able to keep them down with, um, ibuprofen, um, but it, it, it was still taxing. Um, then, uh, day four or five, my brain is a little foggy. Uh, the fevers broke for a couple days. I thought I was on the upswing. I was walking around the yard trying to express my lungs, uh, push things out, get things, get the blood moving. And, uh, um, that lasted, <laughs> A few hours, and the next day I got hit with another, um, another uh, fever, and I was down for the count again. Um, and I'll tell you, I can I can totally understand what people say with this thing. That if you don't force yourself to get up, you'll just lay there and die. It's, and I'm going to say design. It's by design, I believe. I believe by design to take all your inhibitions and your your will to survive and live. And um, if you allow it um, to do that, it doesn't end well. You have to force yourself to keep moving. You have to force yourself to drink and eat. I mean, saying there's no appetite, I don't think people get that. Um, to think about eating makes you nauseated and you feel like you're going to vomit just thinking about it. Um, but you have to force yourself to eat. You have to force yourself to push lots of flu fluids. Um, I personally was drinking a lot of airborne, a lot of immune type drinks. Um, I, uh, vitamins, uh, vitamin D, vitamin C, that's what I did. I'm not telling you to do it. Ask your doctor uh, for you. Um, I also did a lot of ginger, lemon tea with a little bit of honey. Um, the hot stuff was helping for a while with the lungs. And then, um, when it hit me, the second wave hit me, my lungs started to in on themselves. I just got done from the doctor. I'm in the parking lot <coughs> waiting for, <coughs> sorry, my prescriptions. The doctor said I'm borderline pneumonia. Um, he said, I've got, um, um, nasal infection. So he prescribed, and this is he, what he prescribed for me, um, broad spectrum antibiotics, as well as, um, uh, steroids for my lungs to open them up and, um, inhalers in a home and a funeral treatment if I need it to open up the lungs, which that's what they gave me that at the clinic. And, uh, it helped immensely. Um, as I wouldn't be able to talk with you right now this morning, I wouldn't have been able to talk like this. Um, the pressure on my chest, um, the, 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 it, it was like a vice, like, um, like having a 30 pound kid on your chest, uh, to walk to the bathroom was, I mean, it just, it was, it was just almost unbearable. Um, my pulse ox was at, uh, 91. They say 90 and under is bad. Mine was at 91. By the time I got done with the uh, brutal uh, nebulizer treatment, uh, I was at 100 for oxygen, which was great. <coughs> but guys, there's a lot of fear mongering about going to the doctor. And I understand it because people are afraid that doctors are going to push them into being intubated. And, you know, it's all about the money. They get credit, you know, all this stuff and that. I'm telling you with prayer and faith in God, he will line up who you need to see. I just pray, Lord, let it be a godly man or woman. Um, 
and and I believe that's who he lined up for me. He said, I don't even need to test you. He said it would be a waste of a test. Um, you have all the symptoms. He said, I have no doubt that you have it. He <coughs> also said that people are waiting too long, and that is the problem. Um, when it gets to the point when you can't breathe, when you're struggling to go to the bathroom, he said, you need to get to the doctor. And people are waiting at home thinking that they're going to get through it with, you know, their natural homeopathic remedies. And I'm not against homeopathic remedies at all, folks. I'm a farmer. I harvest um, and grow herbs for medicinal purposes. I, I'm a true believer. But sometimes it's not enough. And it, for you out there that are thinking it's always enough, that's when you're walking a line of danger, when you're on thin ice. Sometimes you need help more than homeopathy. Um, and um, so understand that the doctors are not all to get you. Um, there's good doctors out there. I was shown that today. Um, and um, I want to encourage you guys to be healthy. My problem is everybody in the house is getting better. My husband soldiered through this. Um, son-in-law's, you know, okay, daughter, very pregnant, my oldest daughter, very pregnant. Um, she's soldiering through it. She's fine. She's coughing it up. It's loose. My little grandson, 15 months old, yesterday morning, he spiked a fever. This morning, he's 100%. Um, he's fine. My 12-year-old behind me is still fighting a fever here and there, but she's coughing it up. She's not, she was kind of later in the game to get it, so she's still in the, in the process of it running its course. Um, my issue is I have low blood pressure. So it doesn't, it wouldn't matter if it was COVID or the influenza or whatever. When it, when I get sick, if I get the stomach flu or whatever, it hits me hard, but my blood pressure drops. So it's a battle because when you get sick, your heart rate will increase to purge all that garbage and get the blood flowing and, and more oxygen. Mine does opposite. So I, I, <coughs> I struggle a lot when I get sick. It's not because I'm an unhealthy per person. I'm very active. Um, um, I farm. I work for another farm. That's So that's not it at all. My doctor even touched my shoulder. He's like, I can tell you're not a lazy woman. He said, you're a, wor you're a workhorse. He did just by touching my shoulder, you know. Um, and uh, so that's that's not the issue for me. And it's low blood pressure isn't a comorbidity um, as in, uh, like diabetes or anything like that. It's just a genetic, you know, my mom had it, my grandma had it. It's just a genetic thing that carried down. It sucks, but it is what it is. So guys, my word for you today is walk in wisdom, understand the limitations to your body. I had pneumonia in the past, so I knew if I didn't get there that it could end bad. Once you have pneumonia, it seems like you're it seems like you're more susceptible to it again. So if you've had pneumonia in the past, you want to be very cautious and and get to the doctor if you have to um, if you can't breathe. <coughs> so folks, I just I want to encourage you. We're living in dark times for sure, but there's still children of light, guys. There's still children of light in this place of darkness. And ask God to line them up for you to bring them in your path so that you don't have to battle while you're sick. Because the last thing we want to be doing is battling while we're sick. I mean, we just don't have it in us, you know. So um, um, walk in wisdom. Walk in there with authority, knowing what you will accept and what you will not accept. And uh, um, if you're not comfortable with your doctor, request and require another one. Um, and go to another hospital or clinic if that's what you have to do. And for God's sake, make sure you have support. For all you that are single, that you don't have family or you don't have anybody in your house helping you, I feel for you. I feel for you. But you need to reach out for help um, if you have to. So, guys, I gotta, um, I'm dehydrated right now because I was in the clinic. My husband's going to get me some stuff. So I need to get my medications feed my body, feed my soul, and I need to get better so that I can get back to work. I got six cord of wood that need to be split. 
I only got two cord done before this hit me. So um, we're supposed to get snow at the end of this week here in Wisconsin. And I didn't want all my wood getting covered in snow before it got split. I wanted to get it in the shed and, you know, get it out of the... Because once it snows, it just is a hassle to dig it out and all that kind of stuff. But um, it is what it is. You know, you never get sick at the opportune times. It's just life, right? So, guys, God bless you all. This is my personal personal experience, testimony. Like I said, I'm not giving medical advice. You need to seek a doctor for your personal... Um, um, you know, whatever, your, whatever you need for you. And see, I got to go because I'm, the fatigue is setting in. You can just feel it. It comes in waves and it just, it just comes in waves. It's just like nothing I've ever experienced. And before I go, I want to say this. COVID's real. If you want to believe it's the influenza on steroids, the cold on steroids, I, I tend to believe that myself. It doesn't matter what you call it. It's real. Um, I believe it was a designed, designed weapon. And we got the one, uh, Dr. F, Dr. Death at the helm who had all the patents, who created it, leading the storm. Just the whole situation is crazy to me. Crazy. Um, but guys, pray over your families. Eat healthy, stay strong, be battle ready, and uh, God bless you.